Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? There's a question that I get asked fairly frequently that's, interestingly enough, not really related to technology. But its subject is one that I think is finally worthy of having an episode about. So this time, we're gonna talk about how I created the wall. Now, I did this whole thing before I started creating content on YouTube. So unfortunately, I don't have any video clips of the process, but I do have a decent number of pictures. Some of them are high quality from a DSLR, but others were just quick ones that I took on my smartphone at the time to track progress. So yeah, some of these pictures are kind of potato quality, but they do at least get the point across. In late 2011, I checked out a temporary exhibit at the Minneapolis Institute of Art called Edopop. It was a showcase of some of the museum's ukiyo-e woodblock prints from Japan's Edo period, which lasted from roughly the early 1600s until the late 1800s. In the middle of the exhibit room, they did something interesting to draw attention to a few of the featured prints. And that is, on the walls that they were hanging those prints, they actually printed larger-than-life sections of the art directly on the walls themselves. Now, one of those walls featured the relatively famous and probably very recognizable Hokusai print called the Great Wave off Kanagawa. I didn't realize the museum actually had a copy of that print, which was cool to learn in and of itself, but seeing it really big on that wall kind of got the gears in my head turning. I had a blank wall in my home office that I wasn't really doing much with and just hung a couple of posters on up until then. So I realized, you know, I've got a good opportunity for my own home art project. I started by, of course, moving all the furniture away from that wall and repainting the entire wall white. I'd need a blank canvas of sorts to start with. Then I had to figure out how to actually fit the art on the wall. And this is where it kind of came into terms of thinking like aspect ratios. The original Great Wave piece is closer to, let's say, 4x3, whereas this wall is more like 16x9. I wouldn't be able to fit the entire original piece on the wall without either cropping it or leaving empty space, and I didn't really want to do either of those. Plus, I had to think about the furniture in the space as well and work around it. I didn't really want any of the interesting parts of the art to get covered up. So I found a really high resolution image of the Great Wave on Wikipedia. It's something like 37 megapixels. It's kind of crazy. And I cropped it down to be the right size and aspect ratio to fit where I wanted on the wall. Basically, I focused on the wave crest itself and trying to make sure that none of the furniture was going to block it. From there, I then chopped that image up into smaller pieces, four across and three down. And here's where the technology kind of comes into play a little bit. I had an old LCD projector, and I was able to use it to project each of those images up on the wall. I managed to hack together a simple bracket that allowed the projector to be mounted on the top of a tripod so that I could raise and lower it to the correct level. And then I would simply project each image up on the wall, carefully measuring out exactly where it needed to be, making sure it was the right size, and then tracing out the outline of the image in pencil. And that answer is probably the first question that I get asked the most is, where can I buy the wallpaper for this? Well, this isn't wallpaper. This was all hand painted. After tracing it all out, I then went to the home improvement store and picked out paint and got some other supplies, brushes and that sort of thing. I actually used regular interior household paint because I wanted this to last a long time, but also be simple and easy to work with. However, some of these lines are a bit too fine to use regular like home improvement store kind of brushes on. So I also hit up the art supply store and picked up some proper artist brushes so that everything would work out right. From there, it was a simple but fairly tedious process to pick each color and paint it on the wall. It was kind of a paint by numbers game at that point. Not really a whole lot of thinking, just a lot of monotony over and over. 
I started with the lighter colors and progressed my way to the darker ones. Unfortunately, about halfway through, I realized I didn't really like some of the colors that I had picked. They were a little bit too green for my taste, seeing them actually up on the wall. So I went out to the store, picked new colors, and had to repaint a few sections. It set me back about a week, which is a bummer, but in the end, it proved to be worth it. Ultimately, I ended up with the majority of the artwork painted up on the wall, and it looked great. I did have to do some of the colors with a second coat because otherwise they were just looking a little too thin. You could see the brush marks and the color wasn't quite as saturated as it should have been. So that took about another week to do on top of the rest of it. And I also then needed to think about the signature section in the upper left corner. I had left that in. I could have maybe photoshopped it out or something, but uh, the piece would have felt a little bit incomplete without it. That's where I learned a very important lesson that I want to pass along to you when it comes to painting out masked off sections. When I started by doing the outline of that signature block, I ended up with a lot of paint bleed and I couldn't quite figure out why. I was using high quality tape, but still the paint was managing to leak under the edge of the tape and cause the line to really not look very clean at all. After doing a bit of research, I realized that there's a trick. What you can do is, after laying the tape down, put another coat of the background color over it. This serves to seal the edge of the tape so more paint can't get under it. Then you can go over it with whatever your final color is, and when you peel all the tape off, you get really nice, crisp lines. Ultimately, this entire wall took me about a month's worth of evenings and weekends to put together. I figure I probably did about 20 hours a week on it, a few hours every day on weekdays, and then about 10 hours total over the weekends. So about a month's worth of work. And in terms of cost, well, the supplies were, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred bucks. It really wasn't very expensive. Unless you start to think of your time as an expense in the process, in which case then it got very expensive considering I put in something like 80 hours worth of work to make it happen. Ultimately, of course, I'm very happy with the results, despite how long and tedious of a process it was to actually get this put together. And if you are interested in doing something like this as well, I find that those Japanese woodblock prints make for really good subjects, not only because they can be very visually striking, but also because of their nature. They're woodblock prints, so they're fairly simplistic in terms of their lines. They're not incredibly detailed. You don't see too often where colors fade from one to another more or less a lot of them end up being these kind of like paint by number type of scenarios where you can just trace the lines out on the wall and put the right color in between each of them so you don't really need to have a whole ton of skill i'm definitely no painter by any means yet i managed to pull this off without too much screw ups but anyway, if you like this one, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.